Good afternoon, Source Nation. This is, again, your host, James Johnson. I want to welcome you back to the beginning of our first hour. I know you've been uh, listening to a couple of songs that we've had. So now we're going ahead and we're just going to go go ahead and get things started. I have a gentleman who is in the studio with me today who, just like everybody else that we bring onto the show, is definitely doing some remarkable and some positive things out here in the entertainment industry in, and in music as a whole. Many different things that are going on. And he is part of a collective that goes by the name of Team BSR. This is a phenomenal group. And, you know, again, have some truly amazing things that are going on. You know, one of the things about me when, you know, we definitely have our conversations and when I bring people into the studio is I try not to give too, too much information. I definitely want you to be able to pick up on things on your own a little bit. And uh, I think I'm just as excited as I could ever be to have him in the studio. Uh, this is PC Patton. And again, he's a collective team BSR. And I want to go and welcome him into the studio today. How you doing today, man? I'm doing all right, sir. How you doing? I'm doing outstanding. Before I really do anything else, I just kind of have to make sure that I that I do the responsible thing and thank you. I think that there's so many other things that you obviously could be doing with your time, and I really appreciate the fact that you know you're taking that time out really to talk to us about the many things that you have going on, the many things that your group members have going on as well, and, you know, just what the general public and, you know, the fan base and whatnot can really be looking for from you. So, I mean, just like with anybody else, it's it's, it's an amazing honor to have you here today. So thank you so much. Yes, sir. Now, I think just getting started from the very beginning, I think there's a lot of people, you, you know, there's so many people that follow you, of course. So, I mean, you've definitely been making a big difference in the lives of so many people and your fan base and whatnot. But I think that there's a lot of people who still, you know, have not have not really gotten on that train and they don't necessarily know what we have here, you know, the, the glorious thing that we have here. So talk a bit about how the collective began, how everybody came together. Okay. Well, to make a long story short, Team BSR <laughs> Music, we were formed um, in 2000. Um, and it started with just myself, and it came with the vision to bring some positive music to the world with all of the the negative and the, the type of music that's really being pushed on the radio. I felt like it was a need to bring something different to the society, so uh, we formed Team BSR Music, and it's a Christian hip-hop group, and our sole purpose is to bring uplifting hip-hop, positive hip-hop, holy hip-hop, some people call it Christian hip hop, bring it to the world as the years progressed. And I started working on a lot of different projects. God brought about people in my path that were into music as well. And from 2000 to now, we kind of grew a little bit. And, and so it went from being just one artist to like five or six artists who believed in the same purpose, believed to have the same vision. And we just basically try to come together and, and bring positive music to the world to make a long story short. Did you expect it to take off the way that I would say it has? And, of course, I mean, 2000 up until now, clearly that's been, you know, 15 years, 16 years. So it's definitely not anything that's been overnight in that sense. But I think that it still has taken off like wildfire, and there's so many people that love what it is that you're doing. Like, did you expect? you know, the huge buzz that you would get from it? To be honest, no. Like I said, we started this off, and it was kind of like, you know, just to pass time, just to do music, something to do. But then we saw that a lot of people were requesting us to come back to do different events, to do different concerts and different shows. And we felt like, hey, maybe we could probably get a little bit more serious about this situation. And... That's what ended up happening. We are. Uh, it went from being just something to do on the side to one of the main things that we do now, which is go around to different venues. We've uh, done a lot of parades. We've done Riverfest concerts, different events at different arenas, and we didn't expect it to get this big this fast. But it, and all I can say is to God be glory for it because 
we know he's the reason why the situation took off like a rocket ship. I think it's just amazing just because when I listen to your music and when I listen to what it is that you have out there, the last thing that I would say immediately comes to mind is Christian hip hop. I mean, I, I just look at it like it, it's hip hop. I mean, but, yeah. and, and I know that you have those who are, you know, they're going to look at it and they're, oh, this is Christian hip hop and whatnot. But I think that you've done a good job in distinguishing yourselves to the point that that's not the first thing that most people, you know, instantly think about. And I think that's a good thing because, I mean, the, the reality is there's a lot of people who turn their heads at it because of the fact that, you know, that, that you're talking about God and, you know, just you're talking about certain things and people label it as Christian hip hop. And for whatever reason that may be, there's just a lot of people who kind of section it out. And, you know, there's less people, you know, less people that, I guess, gravitate to it because of that. So what do you feel like you've done to really distinguish yourselves in that manner that I guess more people, you know, are really gravitating to your music without thinking that, hey, this is Christian hip hop? Well, I mean, with the music that's on the radio and, and, you know, the music that's online now, we don't want to base our music around what they're doing. We like to do what we're doing, but right. have it still, it's the same, but the only difference is we're bringing a real message to the situation, whereas a lot of music out there that's just talking a bunch of things that don't make sense, and I'm not saying this just to downplay anybody's music, but I know what we can bring. I know what we're bringing to the table, which is a true message of true hip hop. And then there's just that. I mean, to me, there's just a certain level of positivity that's that's missing in hip hop. So I I think that you know it's vital that you guys be here. Uh, I, you know what it is that you offer. Like I I think that we definitely couldn't go without it. You know I, I like I, I don't know if it's just me, but I love what it is that you guys have out there. Uh, what have been, I would say, your biggest struggles in really, you know, keeping yourselves out there and, you know, keeping consistent with it so that, you know, people are really gravitating to what it is that you have? Because I think the other reality is that it's easy to get to a point where, you know, people aren't necessarily listening anymore. And that really doesn't have anything to do with the fact that it's Christian hip hop. I think that just, you know, over time, you know, a lot of times, you know, more people will more people will will start to kind of fade away and whatnot. But you guys have been going strong to the point where your fan base, it, it seems like it just consistently grows and grows and grows. What has been your biggest difficulty in that process? Well, the biggest difficulty, to be honest with you, is being accepted. When we first started, we weren't really accepted a lot in a lot of different churches, quote unquote. I guess from what I hear, we didn't look the part, quote, unquote. I mean, we keep it real with ourselves and we keep it real with our fans. <laughs> what we do with our music, we put life situations of things that we go through to let everybody know that, hey, you're not alone in your situations. We go through things just as well as you go through things. And that's what make a lot of people relate to the music that we're bringing to the table. Where I know at the beginning, when we first started, I guess – for some and in the church, they would say image is everything. I guess we don't have the two-piece, three-piece suits on, and we don't look the part as a, a church goer, so they say. We have our urban wear that we wear. I mean, we're not sagging. We're very presentable, but we just bring a whole different feel to the table, and a lot of churches didn't want to accept it. I've honestly been rejected from some churches, them not knowing that we were there to do the concert, and they prejudged us, and you know, it, it was really funny to me, but, you know, as the years progressed, a lot of people started to say, hey, you know what, these kids ain't, ain't as bad after all, you know, after they hear the <laughs> actual message and what we're bringing to the table, you know, um, and what keeps our fan base close to us is the fact that they can relate to a, a lot of the songs that we are allowed to produce and put together because they know what we're going through and we know what they're going through. Now... And actually, that's good, because I think that the way you just explained that, it really answered a lot of my next question. But I really was just going to ask you, how did how did you get those churches that were, you know, in, in I guess, in a sense, rejecting you, which you wouldn't necessarily expect that from the church. But the, the, the ones that were seemingly rejecting you, how did you get them to, to, I guess, in a sense, come around? 
Well, um, to make a long story short, we would probably, like I said, we would get prejudged by our outer appearance or our clothing. They assumed that we were something totally different. They thought we would just be something, someone from the street that didn't have an anointment on us. Well, once we were able to get on stage and basically minister, and they see how their kids at the churches took to us and how we were able to draw the kids to us and get the kids to listen and once they actually heard the lyrics, you know, they put us to the side, like, after the event. And a lot of churches would tell us, hey, we apologize because we didn't expect this from y'all. We didn't expect our kids to gravitate towards y'all. Like, so, and we, you know, being that, you know, we're music artists, we know that there's going to have ups, there's going to be downs, but we know to have thick skin in this type of situation. So that's one of the main reasons why we um we keep doing what we're doing because we know that a lot of the youngsters they really really need this type of music and they want it and they come to us and let us know hey you know do you have more music um uh, a lot of the parents are starting to ask for more of the music um and it was a few pastors that took they took to us pretty well they are uh, they had our backs when they knew a lot of people was going to try to reject us and they basically came to the table and was like, look, you give these kids a chance because they came to our church, and they changed a lot of lives of a lot of kids who were either selling drugs or, or doing things that they didn't have any any business doing. So once they seen that change was coming along in the, in the community, then a lot of other churches started accepting us and started requesting us, and then that's when things started going a lot better. And that sounds good. I, I, I definitely love that. I'm just glad that more people have really come around, you know, come around just to, to the idea in, 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 in its full capacity, just, you know, because like I said, what you guys bring to the table and what you offer to the music world and the way that you're encouraging so many people who are obviously listening to what it is that you have out there, I, I just think it's great. And, you know, a lot of them, I know that they're listening to us today, so they're really going to get a good feel for the music that you have out there on the table because, you know, obviously we're going to go ahead and play some of the songs here. I want to backtrack really just a little bit just to kind of bring Erica into the fold. And, uh, you know, I I know in a sense how the two of you, you know, it, it really made sense for the two of you to really combine what it is that you were doing. But I think when you have a lot of people who look at your bios and whatnot, they're gonna say, well, they're kind of they're they're kind of from two different areas, or they're ones they're from clean across the world from each other. So, how did the two of you actually, you know, come together to that point where you decided, hey, let's work together? <laughs> well, once again, I grew up in Pensacola, Florida. Once I graduated from high school, I was actually on a running scholarship, so I ended up moving to Wichita, Kansas. Well, really, a yeah. place called Hutchinson, Kansas. And when I moved to Hutchinson, Kansas, I ran track, to make a long story short, made uh, the junior college All-American team, and then I actually went back home to live. Well, something kept telling me, move back to Kansas, move back to Kansas, where I kind of figured out why. Well, my, I had a, I got a son, and my son was getting ready to be born, so it was time for me to come back to Kansas to take care of that responsibility. In the process of moving back to Kansas, I ended up going to Wichita State University. Okay. That's where I was able to gravitate a little bit more with being uh, more serious with the music. And by the time I graduated and started helping out with the school district, I was working at a school called Mayberry Middle School. And they, they it's a performing arts school where my first week there, I went and, you know, introduced myself to a lot of the teachers. And me and the music teacher, we got real acquainted. And he is very awesome. His name is Danny Darrington. He's a very awesome fella. He introduced me to some of his singers. And then I heard Erica sing, and instantly I was like, I need to talk to this young lady because she has a voice. And she was in the sixth grade at the time. Well, from then, met her parents, her mom, that is. Um, we kind of, you know, got more acquainted, got to communicate more, got to hanging around each other more, and I talked to her mom about, hey, what do you think about us working with her, me and my wife working with her to try to get her going in the studio? And she was all for it, and from there it's been history. Um, from the sixth grade to the eighth grade, 
this young lady had blossomed real strong, and we would keep her busy with doing different events, like different coffee shops. We'd go take her to, like, different parades and just different places for her to sing. By the time she got to high school, she was well-groomed because, once again, my wife is a music major. And my wife took her under her wing, taught her how to hold notes, taught her the different notes and how to use her voice to the full potential. Once that took place, Erica, four years later, she graduated from high school, and we decided to work on her solo album because we knew she was ready then. Well, right. since then, her solo album has done awesome. A lot of people are, are loving it. Um, we got it online. She sold a lot of physical copies here because she's actually from Wichita, Kansas. So that's kind of how we kind of linked up. And from then, it's, it's, been, it's been awesome because the young lady, is she, not only does she sing, she acts. She also, she's on a, my wife's band team, which is called First Phase. She does quite a bit of things. And she's also right now involved in modeling. So we're trying to keep her busy with the schedule that she has. She's got some more stuff that she's going to be coming out with. But right now, she's been focusing on modeling since she has her first solo CD done. She just did an album release the end of last year. We've done a lot of Christmas events, and we just stay busy with trying to, you know, keep the kids busy, bringing more positive music to the situation, and, you know, just trying to uplift the world as a whole. I think the two of you definitely belong together, and, I mean, I'm glad that you spoke a lot about, you know, her solo album and just the different things that she has had going on out there because there's so much potential for her and obviously so much potential for Team BSR you know, because of the fact that both of you are involved, because there's so much that both of you bring to the table. But she's amazing, though. And I mean, I, I know I don't need to tell you that. You know that already. But <laughs> she's definitely amazing. I mean, she she's the perfect person to be the lead singer here. And I, I just think she does amazing. Um, and, you know, like I said, there's so much that she brings to the table. And, you know, I, I'm excited about the opportunity of playing the music today that you have. And I'm actually going to get, you know, begin to get into playing that music now, just to make sure that we don't run out of time. I mean, I could talk forever and, you know, talk all day just about the group and what you guys do, but I definitely want to make sure I get this music out there so that, uh, you know, everybody has that opportunity to listen to it. Um, What I'm going to actually do is I'm going to kind of introduce a song and then you can, you know, kind of speak to that song, talk a little bit about it, you know, the idea, be, you know, behind it and what you really wanted to get out there with that song. And um, okay. we'll go ahead and play and kind of move to the next one. Um, is that cool with you? Sounds like a plan. Okay, so the first one that I, that I want to bring up, and before I even do that, I just want to make sure that I note that Silent Prayers and I'm Yours have done amazing here on, you know, on the station, on Source Nation, or with the Source Nation. So I, I think that's something that you definitely should know, you know, when, when those songs are playing, people are loving them and we're getting all kinds of great positive feedback and whatnot from those. So now I'm yours. Kind of talk a little bit about that. Well, we were going as a, as a whole unit, not just me, not just Erica, just everything around us, all our family. We all were going through some crazy, crazy, crazy hardships. And we all just decided to say, hey, we're human. We go through things. We know we're not perfect, but we got to learn to just give all our burdens to God. So we just all came together one day, you know, try to keep each other uplifted. Uh, we sat in the studio. Me and my wife were sitting around the keyboard, and she just started playing some, some piano riffs. And every time my wife would play the riff of the instrumental, me and Erica would kind of sit back and we would kind of try to get a feel of how the song would go. Well, we were like, you know what? We all going through a lot of crazy stuff, but guess who we belong to? And then we all would say, we belong to God. So Erica started humming some, some words and the word, the, the two words, I'm yours, just kept coming to her mind. And she kept singing, I'm yours, I'm yours. My wife started playing the piano according to what she was saying, and one thing led to another, and we got a song. And after Erica started singing and putting the chorus together, I started coming together with some with some rap lyrics. And before you know it, within 
15, 20 minutes, we hadn't put a whole song together. And from there, I mean, we ended up doing a music video, and we've ministered that song a lot of different places as well. But just sitting in the studio thinking about all the hardships we've gone, we, we went through and how we all need to keep in mind that no matter what we go through, that we belong to God, we're hit. So that's basically how that song came about. I think it's really good because the the response that, you know, like I said, the response that a lot of people have been given to that has been really, really good. Like what type of response have you seen, you know, as you play it for people or as you perform it? Well, to be honest, I've seen numerous people cry during the song, after the song. Some of the toughest people that say the thugs come to us and say, hey, we appreciate you for that song because I'm going through stuff right now. Um, We've had a lot of different age groups of people come to us and say they really like the song because the song seems real soothing and it's a reminder to let everybody know that no matter what you go through, you belong to God and that you can get through your situations. It's been awesome responses. We've actually been requested to do that song at our next venue that we're going to be doing. So, like I said, it's it's just a lot of people have been giving us nothing but positive feedback on the actual song because it reminds them that no matter what they go through, they belong to God. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll play that, and then we'll come back and we'll move on to the next one. So this is I'm Yours right here on Indie Soul Saturdays. Can't nobody take that. My past is gone. You told me not to look back. 
press on, stay strong. I know you lead the way. Been down for so long, but you made a brighter day. I'm yours for sure. Can't can't nobody take that. My past is gone. You told me not to look back. Press on, stay strong. I know you lead the way. Been down for so long, but you made a brighter day. So it's definitely good to be able to get that one out. But the next one that I want to go into, which is also doing really popular, or that has been really popular here on the station, is Silent Prayers. So talk a little bit about that one. Well, Silent Prayers actually came about my sophomore year in college. My mom passed away due to an aneurysm. And I never really could grasp the fact that you know, she was 44 years old and, you know, she was, to me, that's a young age. And I remember her always telling me that before she passed away to get to yourself and do a little silent prayer to yourself and make sure you pray every night. She taught me the Lord's Prayer. She taught me a lot of things before she passed on. Well, the the actual lyrics to that song is the first verse is based on the experience I went when I had to go through the the situation with my mom passing away, it talks about moving mountains. It talks about just staying strong in all these situations and, you know, basically just trying to keep everybody uplifted through all of the, the hardships that you go through. It's just more so just to try to keep people going no matter what you feel like giving up. Just know that you have to have prayer in your life to keep you moving, to make a long story short. Once again, that second verse came about. We wanted to kind of acknowledge the president because we know he's going through quite a bit of stuff himself. We're not physically around him, but we can tell through the media and through what the TV and what everybody else portray, the negativity they're bringing about. And we wanted to kind of let him know, hey, man. We know you're going through it. We'll be praying for you as well. We're not just praying for ourselves, but that song is to let a lot of people know that, hey, we're praying for everybody in their situation. So given you and, you know, the things that you yourself have gone through, how has that song been, been therapeutic for you? Being that we're in the studio quite a bit and we, you know, we were, God was able to, put our minds together to put the song together. It's like any time that we feel like something is going on that we have no control over, which honestly we're not in control over a lot of things, we can go back and just turn that song on, sit back, and it's a reminder to let us know, hey, we're not in control of anything. God is in control of everything. And just as long as we stay on our prayers and we be obedient to him, then he's going to make the situation pan out. So it's been very therapeutic to, like, the whole camp because that's one of the main songs that we we worked on when we first got together as a unit, and that's, like, the nucleus of the camp. That kind of describes the camp as a whole. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and play that right here on Indie Soul Saturday. So Source Nation, this is Prayers with Team BSR right here on Indie Soul Saturdays. When I know I cannot Hear the silent prayers to So I'll 
what's the, I guess, what's the biggest response that you've gotten from, you know, silent prayers when you go out and you actually perform it with, you know, with an audience? Because I think it's a lot different sometimes when you see somebody perform it versus when you listen to it on a radio or you listen to it, you know, on a CD or anything like that. So what's been the biggest, you know, response that you've gotten while you've been out performing it? What's awesome about that song, a lot of people know the whole song, and I was very unaware of it. So a lot of times when we go and perform the song, we invite kids or whoever to get on stage with us and sing it or rap it with us, and you'd be surprised by how many kids flood the stage, and they know, like, all the lyrics. It shocks me that they know, like, all the lyrics to the song. The video is on YouTube, and we have a lot of awesome comments on YouTube about the video as well. It's just amazing just to know little kids, um, kids in elementary school, middle school, it's amazing to see that they know the actual lyrics to the song. Because, you know, nowadays a lot of kids, they just bop to the beat. They don't really care about the lyrics unless the chorus come on. Well, these kids actually know my rap verse, and I find that to be very amazing. Like, was, it, was there ever any fear at any time? And it, this, this always makes me laugh because I used to always, you know, think about what, if, you know, what if somebody got out there and, you know, they, they think people know the song and, you know, how when, when people perform, they kind of put the microphone out there towards the audience. You know, what if nobody really was picking up on it? Like that, that I think that would be really, really crazy. Um, it's yeah. good to see that so many people are, you know, really catching on to it, though. Yeah, it was a shock. Me and Erica, while on stage, I mean, as as ministers slash performers, we, we, you know, we have to keep on with the flow. But as we see people singing it, we look at each other in, a, in shock, like, wow, this many people know our song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So now, you know, definitely moving on, you know, to the next one, to the, to the final one. Don't cry. I think that's something that is really picking up with people, you know, just in terms of uh, terms of popularity and, you know, people that love it and people that, you know, where it's really, you know, doing something powerful for them in their lives. Kind of talk a little bit about that. Okay. Don't cry. <laughs> Once again, a lot of these songs fall back to me thinking about the times that I spent with my mom. The few times that we have been to church when she, before she passed away, it's almost like every time me and her would go to church when I was a youngster, she would always cry at the end of service. And I would always look to my mom and be like, Ma, don't cry. Everything's good, you know. And, and, and I was sitting in the studio by myself one day. I had a, a producer that basically just sent me an instrumental. He was like, hey, I've tried to let other people use this instrumental. They feel like it's not, quote, unquote, hardcore enough. So he said, I want to see what you can do with it. Just listen to it. Let me know what you think. So after just five minutes of listening to it, the vision and the thoughts of the things that me and my mom went through came to my mind. And the the only quote that, that stuck with me is, don't cry. And once that quote stuck to me, I, me and my wife sat down. We thought about the actual chorus. Um, I had one of my artists by the name of Jeremiah. I had him sing it. Me and my wife wrote and co-wrote the song. I did the rap verse on it. And... That song is very touching because, once again, that's another song that a lot of the people listen to. Um, when we go minister that song, the chorus is so catchy that we could stop the song, do it a cappella, and everybody will be singing along with us. It's very amazing just, just, once again, to see the amount of people that know the actual lyrics of the song and that sings along with it and the response we get after we get done ministering the song. I mean, people come to us and they say, hey, man, this song helped me throughout this situation, or I gave this song to my grandma or my auntie, and they just love it. They got it in their CD deck. They they haven't taken it out the CD deck yet, and it's just awesome for us to hear that because that's what we want for people to do. We want them to gravitate to the music, and we want them to love the music, not just that. We want it, We want the music to be therapeutic for them like it is for us. We're not just making our music just for us. We make the music for the people so the people can know that, hey, we're not alone in this situation. So we're going to go ahead and play Don't Cry, you know, so, so that the audience can really get a feel for that. So this is Don't Cry 
right here on Indie Soul Saturdays with Team BSR. I'm gonna trust the Lord. 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 Can't sit and trip and worry about what people say. Uh, uh, Live by the spirit, going bold every day. day. Getting rid of sin, shooting like a fadeaway. On to a new walk with a new life and a brighter right day. day. See situations try to get you, try to hold you hold down. You down. Staying rooted in the word to help you get around. Get around. Until we walked in each other's shoes, let's realize, realize the struggle don't have to be struggles if we compromise. You see, I pray for you. I hope you pray for me. Putting the foolish in the past like it was supposed to be. Like Matthew with Jesus said. Follow me. Follow me, we far from worthy, but we still dropping everything, everything. No, more no more tears, we ain't gotta cry, cry. We get the better days living in the new life Time wasted when you're sitting, so you gotta, you gotta try. try Jesus is the truth and you can't deny Don't cry. Yeah. I know that the Lord's there I knew exactly what you were talking about. <laughs> but w- with the song Groove, that came on a whole different level. One of my other artists by the name of LP, um, me and him were sitting around one day. We had just got done with an event, a kids' event. And we we seen all the kids at one point. They were all hyped and into it and energetic. But then we saw some people, they were kind of, you know, being negative to the situation. They wanted to try to find some fault with what we were doing and we were like man these cats is really hating you know and 
we we were like, you know what? We can't let them disturb our groove, man. So we sat in the studio one day, and my wife was playing the piano once again. And me and my me and my artist Larry was like, hey, we can't let them disturb our groove. So no matter what they're thinking, we got to keep doing what we got to do. So that song came about, and that's actually one of the quickest songs that we've ever recorded. That song took 15 minutes to record. I think it's amazing, though, you know, just like it it sounds amazing, but I think there's definitely a powerful message in it. So we're going to go ahead and play it real quick because I know that we're running a little bit short on time. So this is Groove right here on Indie Soul Saturdays with Team BSR.
Okay, so as we get down to the end and we begin to wrap things up, I think my next question is kind of in retrospect, you know, looking at the very beginning and, you know, when when everything came together up until now, what in your mind, what was it that you felt like you really wanted to come across as, you know, as, as a group? You know, what did you feel like you really wanted to do in music? And then do you feel like you've been able to accomplish that? Well, honestly, what we wanted to come across as, we wanted to basically show the world that hip-hop can be positive. When hip-hop started, and, you know, I was listening to hip-hop in the 80s, and a lot of people won't go back to that era of hip-hop, but that's when hip-hop, to me, was at its finest. I mean, you had the break dancing. All of the artists were, were rapping about cool things. They weren't cussing or downgrading women. They were just rapping about positive things, and, and it was energetic music. But as the years progressed, a lot of the music became a little bit more, I would say, demonic or it came negative or derogatory towards certain things. And our main mission is to bring back that true essence of hip-hop, to show people how hip-hop can be of a positive culture. Hip-hop is not negative. Uh, true enough, it, there's a lot of artists, and I'm not one to bash anyone once again. It's a lot of artists that bring a negative feel of hip-hop, and it's getting into the minds of the youngsters. Well, our, our main and sole mission is to bring true hip-hop and show that the youngsters, hey, you don't have to cuss in your music. You don't have to be derogatory. You don't have to be downgrading or negative in your music. You can bring hip-hop on a positive note and still be energetic and still be effective. So that's our main mission is to bring the true essence of hip-hop back to the world. I think that you're correct, you know, in, in the way that you describe back in the 80s. And I think one of the biggest differences, you know, of then versus now is just that there definitely was a lot more positivity. And while you saw the struggle that people were going through, you were able to see the outcome and how they were able to grow out of that and, you know, what what came of it. You know, where, whereas, you know, a lot of times now you don't necessarily get that full picture anymore. So exactly. I think that, that definitely was a really good time. And it's good that you take things back to there. And I think as we have people like you that are doing it, more people are going to gravitate to that and then really start doing it because it, it is something that is missing out there in music. Exactly. Now, where do you feel, you know, looking forward, where do you feel like you really want things to go for, you know, you and Erica? Well, um, we're going to take this thing worldwide. I mean, sky's the limit with the situation. We've linked up with an awesome promoter, Miss Green. We met her. It's funny how I met her. I met her through the Internet because I've been, in the past couple years, I've uh, decided to not try to do as much on the, the business aspect and try to put it in the hands of someone that I can trust because I got my hands really full of being the CEO of Team BSR Music. So I'm trying to delegate some tasks, but we plan on taking this thing oh, worldwide. Oh, yeah. That's hard to do. And, that's hard to do. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But I think um, God has put the right people in our path to help us get this thing going worldwide, and not just in the United States. I actually had talks with my wife about going overseas to other countries. Just, like I said, sky's the limit with the situation, and we're just taking it one step at a time. But it's moving faster than expected, so we're putting our seatbelts on, and we're getting ready for the ride. And wherever it takes us, we're going to go. I think that's great to be able to, to, like you said, delegate some of that stuff away because there's so many different aspects of it. But it definitely is difficult being able to delegate that stuff because a lot of times you have that mindset where it's like I, I want it done right or I want it done a certain way, so I feel like I have to do it myself. So it's good getting to a point where you have yes. you know, the right people working with you and then you can actually delegate things and know that they're going to be done the way that they should. So, I mean, I, I think kudos to you for being able to get to that point where you are delegating things because I know you're crazy busy. Oh, yes. <laughs> now, where can people find everything that you have out there online? Just, I mean, you know, obviously the Internet and social media have taken over in so many ways. So, like, mm -hmm. for the people that are, you know, glued to, you know, their, their Twitters and Facebooks and Instagrams and now Snapchats and things like that, yeah. 
Well, we have a, a Reverb Nation page, which is um, ReverbNation.com, the backslash, and it's Team BSR Music. We also have a SoundCloud, which is SoundCloud.com, and it's, once again, the backslash and Team BSR Music. We have a YouTube channel. You go to YouTube, and you can type in Team BSR Music and have it as one word and push the enter button, and it will bring up all our videos all our interviews, everything that we have going. Those are the main sites. We're actually working on a personal website right now. Ms. Green is actually putting that together for us now. But those are the main sites where everybody can really check out our music and, and kind of see the projects that we're working on and that we are, the projects that we have worked on. Now, what are you most proud of about, you know, the journey of Team BSR? The fact that everybody stay loyal to the situation. I mean, because you know with groups, people come and go. You got some people in it for the wrong reasons. Just the fact that everybody just stayed loyal and stayed true to the vision because they could have easily said, you know what, forget this, I'm gone. You know, especially when times got tough because it wasn't always going like it's going now. There was a lot of hardships. There was time where we had little or no equipment where we had to go to other people's studios to record before, you know, the Lord blessed us with our own studio. But the fact that my artist stayed loyal to the situation just kind of won me over, and it made me appreciate life a little more. It made me uh, trust in them, and they trust in me, and, and we all kind of bonded together, not just as a unit, but as a family. And then finally, are there any uh, last words of encouragement or anything that you really want to get out there to you know the, the tons of fans that you have out there listening to us today? Man, my main thing of encouragement is to let people know that, hey, no matter what you go through in life, I mean, we all go through different walks in life, but we all people of the same kind. We all are God's children. Let's keep everybody encouraged through matter, no matter what the situation is. Let's just try to be positive throughout all of our situations and our walks in life and just let's just stay encouraging because with this day and age, there's a lot of negativity going on. And it seems like the negativity is trying to outweigh the, the good, but we can counter that. We can overcome that if everybody just comes together and just, you know, know that, hey, we can do this. There's no I in team. And teamwork makes the dream work. That's my main quote for everything. Teamwork makes the dream work. It definitely does. Well, I, I have to say, you know, before we actually close out, you know, here, I, I definitely have to say one more time, thank you, just because, you know, like I said in the very beginning, I think there's a lot of things that you could be doing with your time today. And, you know, you took the time to actually have this conversation with me. And, you know, of course, you always want to be out there promoting and whatnot, but it gets tiring sometimes. So I, I really appreciate you taking the time out to talk with us today. And we definitely want to make sure that we extend that offer to you, you know, right off the top that, you know, you can always come back here on the show anytime that you want. We definitely want to have you here because we know that, you know, you're vital to our audience and our audience loves what it is that you have out there. So, you know, we definitely want to make sure that you feel welcome and, you know, that you come back here and, you know, give us the exclusives like you're doing right now. That's a blessing. And we, we were honored to be able to be on your show. Okay. So, so you know, that being said, you know, uh, you know, again, thank you so much. And then, you know, we'll definitely be in touch, you know, as, you know, as you, as you have more going on, we'll bring you back on here and let, you know, let you get that out there again. Yes, sir. And once again, we appreciate you for your time. Most definitely. You have a good one. You too, sir. All right now.